Good day and welcome to Mission Control Houston, where the International Space Station Flight Control Team is watching over the systems aboard the orbiting outpost as it uh, tracks across the Atlantic Ocean from uh, northwest to southeast uh, at an altitude of about 250 statute miles on board the Expedition 36 crew, uh, Commander Pavel Vinogradov and uh, Flight Engineers Alexander Mazurkin, Chris Cassidy, Fyodor Yoshikin, Luca Parmentano, and Karen Nyberg are all uh, busy with another day of on-orbit operations. Uh, following uh, yesterday's shortened one-hour, 32-minute spacewalk, uh, the team uh, in the U.S. side of the space station, in particular spacewalkers Chris Cassidy of NASA and Luca Pamitano of the European Space Agency, uh, have been uh, conducting exhaustive troubleshooting activities taking a look at the spacesuit that was worn by Luca Parmitano on that one hour and 32 minute spacewalk. Uh, shortly uh, after he uh, completed uh, his first task of the spacewalk, which is scheduled to be six and a half hours long, uh, he reported uh, some water uh, inside his uh, helmet uh, didn't think it was immediately uh, going to be an issue, but uh, after uh, his uh, fellow spacewalker Chris Cassidy was able to get a look inside uh, his uh, uh, faceplate, uh, he saw that there was more water than uh, they believed there was and uh, worked with the flight control team, uh, flight director Dave Korth and uh, Karina Eversley, the lead uh, spacewalk officer, and made a quick determination that it was a potential hazard and that they needed to terminate the spacewalk, end it early, and bring the crew back inside to make sure that they were safe. Uh, all that uh, went very well. The uh, team here has trained for uh, uh, contingency re-entry into the Quest airlock module, which you're looking at here in some video from yesterday's spacewalk. Uh, and they were able to successfully get uh, Parmitano and Cassidy quickly back into the airlock and then back into the International Space Station, uh, where they were able to get uh, Parmitano and Cassidy out of their suits and uh, uh, make sure that uh, everybody was okay. Uh, today, the uh, work has been focusing on trying to troubleshoot uh, what might have gone wrong. There still is no uh, smoking gun or definite cause of what happened or why that water uh, ended up inside uh, Parmitano's spacesuit. There are a couple of different uh, potential sources for that water. Uh, the, uh, they have each have about a 32-ounce drink bag that they are able to uh, keep rehydrated with. Uh, uh, there also is water that courses through a, a set of tubing in their uh, essentially long underwear that's used to cool them uh, when they are outside uh, the uh, space station. Uh, and that water flows through a different sets of plumbing, uh, both inside the uh, the suit around the astronauts and in the backpack. Uh, the team here on the ground today has been doing a variety of different uh, troubleshooting activities. Some of these we're seeing uh, from recorded video downlinked here in the uh, equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock module, uh, activating uh, the equipment lock, uh, beginning to recharge the uh, suit with water, inspecting every nook and cranny for any size of water leakage. Uh, so far, there hasn't been any immediate noticeable leakage other than some droplets in the uh, neighborhood of, of one of the inlet loops from the uh, canisters you use to scrub excess carbon dioxide from the spacesuits. Uh, but the spacewalk specialists here in Mission Control uh, have seen a higher than usual usage of water from the feed tank that uh, runs throughout the system uh, and the suit's plumbing. Uh, and that could have been consistent with the reading that were seen yesterday when Pramatano's helmet began to fill up with water. Uh, again, no real theory yet on exactly where this water came from or why, but they're uh, doing a, a very uh, deliberate step-by-step -step process of troubleshooting to try and identify uh, what's going on. Uh, the spacesuits are, in a way, a combination of, of parts, uh, and uh, there is uh, there's an additional spacesuit on board the space station. Should there be any uh, contingency outside that would be uh, necessary to have a spacewalk, uh, something that would be very important to the space station, uh, they could uh, resize spacesuits and have these guys ready to go out, uh, assuming that they're able to identify that this is not a uh, any kind of an issue that would affect all spacesuits uh, and that they were able to isolate it to this particular suit that Parmitano uh, was wearing. Uh, 
Chris Cassidy didn't have any problems with his suit yesterday, so there's no evidence that there is a uh, generic problem with the spacesuits. And so uh, the team now is focusing on trying to figure out exactly what uh, happened yesterday so that they can uh, uh, identify and uh, design a repair procedure uh, or shift over to alternate spacesuits. Uh, and no plan uh, as of yet and uh, as to when they might try to do any of those uh, tasks that were unable to be accomplished on yesterday's spacewalk. Uh, none of those tasks was uh, particularly time critical. Uh, and so the team here is going to take a very deliberate and uh, careful uh, look at everything. Of course, uh, research continuing aboard the International Space Station today. Uh, Russians working with a variety of different experiments. Uh, Karen Nyberg uh, also doing some proficiency training for her role as the crew medical officer on board. Uh, she's also scheduled to be replacing a recycling system tank in the environmental control life support system and working with uh, the advanced biological research system. The uh, spacewalkers also are uh, stowing the tools that they had pulled out uh, for yesterday's EVA so that they are out of the way uh, and not uh, any impediment to the troubleshooting activities. A lot of uh, research has been going on uh, throughout the week uh, of this uh, uh, Expedition 36 activity. Uh, in addition to uh, that, they've been uh, performing a large number, almost a full uh, work week's worth of uh, research going on. Uh, last week, uh, about uh, 17 hours worth of crew time was uh, uh, scheduled for research, even though the uh, we had the spacewalk and all those preparations going on. And also, uh, the crew uh, on the Russian uh, portion of the station has been busy uh, packing up uh, trash and no longer needed items inside the Progress 50 spacecraft, which is scheduled to uh, undock from the International Space Station on July 25. Uh, the coverage of that on NASA TV will begin at 3.30 p.m. Central Time, and the undocking is scheduled for 3.43 p.m. Uh, Progress 50 is uh, on the piers docking uh, module for the space station, and uh, when it departs, it will make room for the uh, next cargo vehicle, Progress 52, which is scheduled to launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan uh, on Saturday, July the 27th. Uh, launch uh, is uh, scheduled for 3.45 p.m. Central Time, and it'll be going through an expedited four-orbit, six-hour uh, travel to the International Space Station, and uh, docking of the new Progress ship uh, to that Piers docking compartment is scheduled for 8.45 p.m. Central Time on July 27. Our correct, correction, we'll have our coverage start at uh, 8.45 p.m., and then docking will be occurring at 9.26 p.m. Central Time. Again, all that will be covered on NASA television uh, as uh, the month of July continues.